Today, we are talking about something that most people totally overlook, which is your home network. Because your Wi-Fi is not the internet, it's how you access the internet. And if it's not secure, everything else you do online is basically sitting wide open. Your Wi-Fi network is the digital front door to everything else in your home. Every single device that connects to your router, from your phone to your fridge, is like a potential entry point for attackers. So if your router still uses default credentials, or if it hasn't been updated in years, that is basically leaving your front door wide open with a little neon blinking hack me sign. And while routers used to be very set and forget type of boxes and you could just not touch the thing for years and it would work fine, today they are powerful little computers that need maintenance, just like your laptop or your phone. Oh, hi, Suki. What are you doing? Come here, come here, Paige. Can you see her? That's my baby. Suki came to say hi. Uh, see, I have a whole farm in here. So let's get your router and your Wi-Fi locked down and set up a secure guest network for visitors and your smart home devices. What's up, s'mores? I am Shannon Morris, and welcome to day four of my 30-day security challenge, where we are protecting your digital life one bite-sized step at a time. Suki, get your head out of the litter box. Cat poop is not a treat. Sorry to all the dogs at home. I said the T-R-E-A-T -E word. Every day we are breaking down one concept of online security and privacy to make the process less stressful and to keep you from burning out. So if you are following along, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. You can also grab the full 30 day challenge checklist and notes over at shannonrmorse.com. Step one, know your gear. All right, it's time to do a little bit of detective work. So grab that notepad that you had from earlier earlier in the challenge and find your router and your modem. If you didn't write them down, write them down now. If you only seen one box, you have probably got some kind of combination device from your internet service provider, your ISP. If you see two devices, you probably have a modem and a router. The modem is a box that brings the internet into your house and allows you to get wired network connections. If you use an ethernet cable and plug your device directly into a modem, you will get internet through a wired connection. A router is for wireless connections and it lets all your wireless enabled devices connect to your internet. When you open your Wi-Fi settings on a laptop and you see the Wi-Fi network name, you type in a password to connect. When you do that, your laptop is connecting to your router. Write down the brand and the model number of these boxes and then Google it with the words release date for these devices. If you see that it is several years old, it might be time for an upgrade. Older routers often stop getting firmware updates, which means they are basically frozen in time with security flaws that never get patched. And hey, newer routers also have a little bonus too. It usually means faster speeds, so that ends up being a win-win. Right now we have things like Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7 routers. While these are more expensive, also they sometimes come with built-in security layers like WPA3 Personal and automatic firmware updates, so it might be worth it to invest in newer ones that you can have for several several years down the line. Now, if you're not sure what to buy, usually your ISP has recommendations on their own websites, or you can check online for newer options that are compatible with your ISP. And FYI, your ISP is the internet service provider. It's the company who pushes the internet into your house through a line, and they bill you every month for the service. If your ISP provided the router, call them and ask if they have a newer model available or see if you can buy your own. Owning your own gear gives you full control, not your ISP, and you may be able to save some money on a rental cost. Also, another pro tip, if you have a fiber to the door connection like I do, your ISP can support it if you bring your own router. I ended up doing this for my own network and I do have a whole network set up that you can watch on my YouTube channel. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, a subscribe would mean so much to me. Subscribing is a very simple and free way to support creators on YouTube, especially as smaller YouTube channels. So if you are following along with the challenge, hit that subscribe button. Ooh, don't chew on cables, ma'am. So if you are following along with the challenge, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss tomorrow's video, and you can grab that full checklist and the daily recap over at shannonrmorris.com. Also, a big Patreon shout out to my s'mores. You can join them and support my channel by going over to patreon.com slash shannonmorris for perks like early video access and my private Discord. As usual, all the videos on my channel are free to watch, and I thank my YouTube members and my patrons for making that
that possible. Step two, lock down your router. Now that you know what you are working with, it is time to log into your router's admin interface. Open your browser and type your router's IP address. Usually it's gonna be something like 192.168.1.1 or 10.0.0.1. Newer devices sometimes also use a router's companion app on your phone, so if it has one, that's another way to log in. I set up a fancy small business network a couple of years ago because I run a YouTube channel, so you will see my login screen here. Yours will likely look a little bit different because it has different logos and branding for whatever company made your router. Whichever case it is, just log in. If you are not sure about the username and password, whatever those might be, it's usually printed on the bottom of the router if it came from your ISP, or you might have a default username and password available in the box that they came in. Now, once you are in, look for login and security settings and change change the default login credentials. If your username and password are something like admin and admin, yeah, it's time to fix that. So let's go ahead and fix it. Create a new username and a strong password. If your password or your username are written on the back of your router, see if you can change those too, and hopefully you can. Once changed, write the new credentials down in your notepad for now, or you could even put them into your password manager if you feel okay with doing that. You also want to disable any security settings that could make your network vulnerable to remote hacks. That includes remote management, WPS, and open ports. These are features that may be defaulted to on simply for convenience and to allow you to log into your network whenever you are not even home on your home network. But that also means that somebody else that is not on your home network could also manage your router from outside your network, outside your home. So to double check your setup and make sure your home network is actually secure and all those ports are closed down and everything is locked, all those doors are locked, go over to grc.com slash shields up. This is a really great tool I found years and years ago to test if your router has open ports visible from the internet. Also a note on apps. While these are convenient, these apps can also collect telemetry data. So check the privacy settings, turn off any kind of cloud control or remote diagnostics if those are available to you. And if your router offers built-in network scanning, go ahead and use that too. Now run a device discovery scan and look for anything unexpected. It's a really great way to spot any kind of rogue devices while you're chilling on your admin panel, or if any neighbors have accidentally started using your Wi-Fi. You can check and make sure that there's no weirdness going on on your router and make sure all the devices that are connected to your router should actually be connected. Step number three, update and secure your Wi-Fi settings. So next we are going into your Wi-Fi settings and making sure that you are using W WPA2 or WPA3 encryption. If both of these are listed, click the box for WPA3, which offers more security protections. If your router still lists WEP, just delete it from your life, uncheck it, remove that option. That protocol is so outdated at this point, it's basically just decorative. Change your Wi Fi name, your SSID, and your password as well. Remember when earlier you signed into your router with some kind of admin username and password? Now those are going to be different than your Wi-Fi SSID and the password. The login credentials from earlier are just how you log into the router to manage your network. The Wi-Fi name and password, the SSID, are how people and devices can connect to the Wi-Fi router to get internet. And you can totally get creative here with the name. You can call it like the promised land or FBI surveillance van. I know that's an oldie, but it's such a goodie. And make sure that your Wi-Fi password is strong and unique so nobody randomly can connect to it or guess the password. You don't want your neighbor connecting to your Wi-Fi network by just guessing the password and then using it for something nefarious. Now, if your router supports both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz networks, go ahead and name them separately. You could call your first one FBI Surveillance Van 2.4, and you could call the 5 gigahertz network FBI Surveillance Van 5 gigahertz. Go ahead and name them separately. That way you can tell which one is which. That just makes it easy 
easier to tell which one you're connected to later. A lot of devices, especially smart home devices, only support 2.4 gigahertz wireless frequencies. So you probably wanna leave that enabled so you can still use those devices with your router. Now, while you are in there, turn on the firewall if your router supports it, enable HTTPS access for your admin interface. That will encrypt your login session and make it harder for snoops to spy on your router setup. And then we move on to step number four, which is creating your guest networks. Now let's talk about network segmentation. In human terms, it's like having two Wi-Fi networks underneath one roof. You will use one for your personal devices, like your laptop, phone, and main computer, and one for guests in smart home gadgets. Now what if you have a guest visiting? If you don't want them to see everything else that's on your Wi-Fi network or give them access to everything else on your network, you may want to set up a guest network specifically delegated to visitors. This is a completely separate Wi-Fi network for guests. You could also use a guest network for all your smart home stuff too, or you could set up a third Wi-Fi network just for smart home devices. So what's the point of doing this exactly? It might sound kind of annoying and a little bit pedantic to set up yet another Wi-Fi network, but this guest network keeps any less secure devices like smart bulbs and thermostats and speakers away from your main personal devices. Smart home devices are prone to hacks. They get less frequent updates, they might not allow you to change default passwords, or they just come with vulnerable hardware from the jump. So if somebody hacks into your smart fridge or a light bulb, they won't be able to use that device as an entry point into the rest of your network, basically stopping them from pivoting to hacking other devices. Your guest network should have its own SSID and password be isolated from your internal network so guests can't see your personal devices, have client isolation turned on so guests can't see each other either, and then you can name your guest network something fun, like not the main Wi-Fi or IoT prison or FBI smart home surveillance van. It doesn't matter. You can name it whatever you want. Just make sure it has its own password and WPA2 or WPA3 encryption. Now, if you need help figuring out which devices should connect to which SSID, we will go over all of that tomorrow. Just get the network set up right now and labeled. A little bonus pro tip, if you just use your guest network whenever you have visitors, you can even turn off the guest network completely whenever it's not in use. Step five, update your firmware. Some routers update automatically, but most of them don't. Look for a firmware or software update button in your admin settings or go to the manufacturer's website to make sure you are running the latest version. I just set up a reminder on my calendar to check for updates once a month. Now, some people will advise that you do not update to the newest available software or firmware available and you wait. That is because sometimes if you update with like beta firmware, then it might break something or there might be a bug. This is a very limited issue, so I generally keep all of my devices updated. Most routers now have a check for update button as well, right in the admin dashboard or the companion app. Now, if your router does not, head over to the manufacturer's website, download the latest firmware, and update it manually through the admin page. If there is an update, go ahead and apply it. Firmware updates patch security flaws, they improve performance, so it's super important to keep your router current. Now for some bonus tips. If you want to go above and beyond, you totally can. You can restrict the admin access to specific IP addresses. You can change your router's default IP address entirely. You can hide the SSID from being viewable, or you can create a login page for your guest network. That may not work if you intend to use it for smart home products that don't have displays though, so keep that in mind. Or even install custom firmware like OpenWRT or DD WRT for advanced control on your router. Smart home devices are slowly standardizing other things like threads or matter protocols, which are more reliable and a great way to keep smart home devices connected without the need for some kind of smart home hub. But those products do not magically make IoT devices safe. You are still dependent on firmware updates and some trust in the manufacturers. So just be careful, those additional bonus tips and steps are for experienced users who don't 
don't mind diving deep into the tech settings. And that is it. You just gave your home network a serious security upgrade, so way to go. Remember, your Wi-Fi is your front door to the internet, so lock it up tight. Tomorrow we will build on this by figuring out which devices are on your network and which ones belong on your guest Wi-Fi. If you are following along, make sure you are subscribed, hit that thumbs up, grab your full 30-day security challenge checklist over at shannonrmorse.com. Links are down in the description below. I'm Shannon Morse. Stay smart, stay secure, and I'll see you tomorrow for day five. Bye y'all.